This is an introduction to Micro, which is a small free application for viewing CT and MRI scans that you can get at the Apple App Store. And it can view lots of different images, but to start out with, let's look at some of the images that come built in. So if you choose from the file menu, when you launch it, you'll see that it can open atlases or open standard images. So we'll start out looking at one of the standard images, which is the Chris T1, which is a T1 weighted MRI scan. And the first thing you'll notice is that the toolbar contains several different options that allow you to control the image. And so the view to menu by button uh, is a drop down menu and it allows you to select whether you see 2D views of the brain, a 3D rendering of the brain, or both the two dimensional and three dimensional image, as well as the axial, coronal, and sagittal images of the brain. So you can choose the image that you like to view the best. And within each two dimensional image, you can click and drag the mouse to choose a slice location to look at. And to move between slices, you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse, or you can use the pinch and zoom functions on a trackpad to go between the different slices. With the rendering view, you can use the drag motion to choose the depth of a clip plane. And you can use the um, scroll wheel or the trackpad to choose the orientation of that clip plane through the image. The other option you have is the ability to choose the color scheme for your object. So you can choose different color schemes to look at. And you can also choose the brightness and contrast. And you do this by controlling the brightest and darkest voxels in the image that are shown. So for example, right now, any color lower than zero will be complete black and any color brighter than 144 will be complete white. But you can change this by typing in numbers to adjust the contrast as you prefer. The other way that you can adjust the contrast is to select the slices. And if you right click and drag over an area, you will choose the contrast to try to optimize the brightness in that one local region of the image. So those are different ways that you can adjust the images and look at them. This is an MRI scan. Let's look at a CT scan that comes with the software. So in open standard, you can see that it includes two CT scans. One is of the abdomen and one is of the head. So look, let's look at the chest CT scan. And CT scans have very specific contrasts. So they're known calibrated contrasts. So we know that air should be about minus 1,000 and bone should be about positive 1,000. And water and most soft tissue are gonna be very close to zero in this range. And if we go to the 3D view, we'll see that the software actually knows about these specific contrasts of CTs. And so it includes a bunch of color schemes that are designed to really optimize the ability to view CT scans. So if we look at the CT kidneys, for example, it will try to highlight the intensities of the kidneys. So it's hiding all of the uh, flesh of the torso and showing really just the bones and the kidneys and a bit of the heart in this case. This is uh, some gadolinium enhancement that's showing the arteries very nicely, including the heart. We can take the exact same scan and simply by choosing a different color scheme like the airways, we can select to try to see the lungs and the interfaces between the air and the surface. And likewise, you could try looking at soft tissue or other features to try to get a nice view of the specific objects you want to look at. If you just want to look at bone, you can select that. Or if you want to look at the surface, you can look at that as well. Now, a lot of medical images 
come in different formats. And this software should handle the most popular ones. Scientists like the nifty format, and it also handles a lot of scientific formats that are a little less popular. But for people who are in medicine, the most popular formats are DICOM images. And so I'm including a link for a set of DICOM images to show how to view these, but let's view a T1 scan from a DICOM image. And DICOM images often save every single two-dimensional slice as a separate file on your computer. And so to view these, you wanna select all the images, all the files that you want to see together and drop them onto the software and it will automatically put them together. And you'll notice that this image initially doesn't look terribly great in the rendering view. And this is maybe a little easier to see if we go to the preferences and choose to view this image on a white background instead of a black background. And this reveals the issue with the scan that right now a lot of the air still has a little bit of a signal in it. And some of this is artifactual signal and some is just the fact that the air uh, isn't uniformly the same dark color. And you've got a couple of options for this. We already discussed how you can hide darker uh, voxels by let's say choosing uh, a value of 99. And that might be one way to try to remove the voxels. But in this case, it's also removing some of the lips and other objects. The software also includes an option under the view menu, menu called remove haze. And if you choose this, it will try to find all the dark items and remove them and try to retain all the other values. And so this is usually a nice way to clean up uh, images that you may get that may show a lot of haze on the outside of the surface that you're looking at. So likewise, we can see if we look at the 2D view, this remove haze has essentially eliminated uh, all that grainy artifact that we had outside of this skull. So the final thing I wanna show you is the way that you can look at overlay images. And so if you choose the file menu and open standard, we'll start out looking at the SPM 152. And this is an averaged anatomical image over a large group of people. And let's choose the black and white color scheme to view this. So we get a nice rendering of the brain in this image. But often scientists create overlay maps that will align uh, statistical maps. So for example, um, an fMRI study where we're looking at which areas of the brain are activated when someone presses their hand. And we wanna show this activation map, this heat map, if you will, on top of this structural image. And so the software, in addition to adding images, you can also add images overlaying them on top of another image. So if you do um, add overlay, you could select a file on your disk. We can also uh, add an overlay by simply holding down the control key when we decide to open an image. And that will say, don't load this as a background image, don't unload the currently loaded images, but load this as a different, an additional image on top of the image we've already loaded. And so in this case, we have the SPM motor, which shows the motor hand movement activation map. I'm just gonna hold down the control key to open the standard image that comes along with the software. And you'll see that when I do this, it's opened the image while still showing that background anatomical image. So right now it's using a yellow color screen, uh, yellow color scheme. And the layer menu, now shows that we can select between two different objects. So we can choose the color scheme for the background, which is currently black with a minimum of 40 and a maximum of 80. And we can also choose the layer of that statistical map that we just loaded. And right now it's showing a warm color scheme, but we could choose a different color scheme, like let's say winter, and we could see how that looks. And likewise, we could choose just for this overlay to hide any value that's, let's say, uh, darker than four. And when we do that, we'll see that a smaller region survives this threshold. We've essentially reduced the region down to a color re smaller region. Likewise, we could go to six and we will now uh, identify an even smaller region that has a 
statistical value of higher than six. So only the very core of the motor hand area is being activated in this map. There's one other way to compare images uh, and their alignment to each other. And that is by opening uh, multiple windows. So you can always choose to open a new window. And on this new window, let's actually open one of the standard images. Let's say the Chris T1 scan. And initially when you open different windows, they're unrelated to each other. And you can look at two different independent images. But we do have a feature called yoking windows. And when we yoke an image, we can click on one location in another image, and the yoked image will be drawn to show the same location. And so we can see if the two images are really aligned well. And so this is another way that we can effectively look at the alignment of different images. We could have loaded these two images with one as being an overlay on top of the other, but we can also use two windows that are yoked with each other so that when we load one image, we'll see the corresponding location on the other image. So these are two ways that you can look at these different features. So that's a really quick introduction to this software. And um, I'm adding links below to some simple manuals and sample data that will go over these issues. But uh, I hope you like it. Thanks.